I lost 21 kgs by eating bats, scorpions, dog, and almost anything you could think of. <laughs> I just wanted to get that out of the way because that is not the case. Yeah, China probably has in some weird villages some dogs that I heard about, but I've been traveling for four and a half years and I've never even seen anything close to that. So everyone just relax. That's not what people eat here. Okay, let's get serious though. Did you know in America the obesity rate is 42%? Guess how much is China? 5%. It's very, very difficult to find an obese Chinese person. But anyway, today I am here to share with you my journey, if I can even call it that, because it was honestly just me living life. So the first maybe year and a half I lived in China, I kid you not, I ate MACDs maybe four times a week. Huh? I didn't exercise and somehow I still lost weight. I didn't completely understand it, but anyway, I was happy about it. It's until that time I was like, okay, I'm not being that healthy. I started trying Chinese food, even though it freaked me out when I first got here, I'm gonna be honest. But since then I ate a lot of Chinese food. I've learned to love it. And Chinese meals are also cheat meals. China also has cheat meals and it's amazing. Now I'm not scared of the food anymore and the food also smells and tastes delicious. And I can't remember the last time I ate MACDs, so thank you, China. So obviously weight is not the only thing that counts to being healthy, right? It's also what you put in your body. Like me, I ate MACDs and I still lost weight. Doesn't mean I was healthy. So today I'm gonna share with you the main topics to why I believe that the Chinese are so thin and also kinda healthy and also the ways that I incorporated into my life that the Chinese have taught me that helped me lose 21 kgs. Woo! So the first topic I want to talk about today is diet. The Chinese eat on time every single day. They eat their breakfast between 8 and 9 a.m., lunch 12 to 1, and then dinner around 5.30 to 7 p.m. As a teacher, it's very difficult to eat during class time or eat whenever you want because for example you have meetings in the afternoon and then you have class at night so you can really only eat whenever you have lunch time or you have dinner time and this kind of forces you to then eat the same time every day so i never really had to force myself to eat this time even though i wasn't hungry so that was definitely a plus point with me being a teacher here in china Another thing, I never ever ate breakfast. Like, I was also always that type of person that said, I don't eat breakfast, I can't eat that early. And it's only until I came to China where I, I don't even know what made me start eating breakfast. They had these nice things called arquois, which I started eating in the morning. And that kind of helped me to not be that hungry and eat that much at lunch and dinner. So it's like, wow, it does make sense that breakfast is the most important meal of the day when you do eat at a restaurant or you order food the portion sizes are much smaller than in the US or in other Western countries and this really kind of helps you to still have a little bit of space in your tummy and not be rolling around after you ate let's get to snacks I never really noticed my co-workers or my friends eat a lot of snacks. So when I was doing my research for this video, I was like, okay, I've got to observe them for a few weeks. And I realized they don't eat any chocolates, any crisps. We had two game nights in the past two weeks. I did buy some crisps and it was never even open. The kind of snacks they eat is also if they eat snacks, which they really don't do a lot. They eat the sunflower seeds, or they eat some spicy small snacks from the convenience store. Look, these are Chinese snacks. Let's see what we got here. Look, such a small pack and it's like spicy things. So good for that metabolism. What's this like chicken? Hmm. Oh, I even got like small eggs for that protein. 
I'm trying to find some sugary things, but as you can see, it's difficult. Oh, here we got some Oreos. See, this I don't really see the Chinese eating, by the way. Oh, the kids love these jellies. Look, look how healthy this is. Like, I think just from a young age, you know, the kids don't really eat lollies. They eat things like this. It's also good for them. Chinese people don't have a sweet tooth. But I do. <laughs> but I love Oreos, for example. Fun fact, Oreos had to be decreased in sugar level in the Chinese markets because it was too sweet for the Chinese to eat. So just another great thing for me so I can eat Oreos and I don't have to worry about that many calories to where I would have eaten an Oreo in the US. If you didn't already know this, the Chinese eat a lot less processed food. They favor less salt, less sugar. The other amazing thing here is when you go into a restaurant and you are being seated, you will immediately get a glass of water or your pot of tea. Totally free, by the way. And this also kind of makes the calories less. For example, if you would have ordered a soda or some juice with a lot of sugar in. The other thing that I believe helps a lot is here in China, they bring the food at different times. And in China, they order different foods, put it in the middle of the table and everyone kind of shares. So this is also another good thing, like when food comes, you can kind of eat, relax, talk, and then enjoy the other plate. So it's not like you're just putting everything in your mouth, forcing it out and then feeling full. Chinese have very small bites. Like they don't have big pieces of meat. So it's much easier to process the food in your tummy, to digest it. It makes you feel fuller and also much healthier because for example, in South Africa, if I would eat, I would be finishing what? Five to 10 minutes. Where here you maybe enjoy a meal for one hour because you eat, you stop, you talk, you drink your tea or your water, you then continue. So it's not just putting everything in your tummy. Like recently I went back to South Africa and we had a good braai and I was so excited to eat meat and I got to half the meat and I was like, oh, I cannot, like I felt sick to my stomach because the pieces are just so thick and that does make a big difference. So I don't think you always realize the effects on your body, how good it is for smaller bites and I never have to feel forced to be like, oh, I got to chew, I got to chew. Here the portions are just smaller, which is amazing. A lot of foods here contain a lot of medicinal qualities like sometimes i would eat a soup and my chinese friends would be like oh did you know this soup contains ingredient a and it's good for body part x and i'll be like that's <laughs> ridiculous that you know that but i'm so thankful for that and yeah at the beginning it's ridiculous but if you think about in the long term how much you're going to eat that food it does make a difference it doesn't just make you fat or it's not just unhealthy it also helps you build your immune system, etc. with the kind of medicinal qualities they have in the food. The one thing I do want to share though, that since I've been in China, I don't drink that much anymore. Which if you didn't know, alcohol causes heart diseases, strokes, high blood pressure, digestive problems. But if you are a big drinker and it's going to be impossible for you to kind of let go of the alcohol, don't worry, China does have a lot of different options when it comes to alcohol. The last thing I want to finish off about diet is when I did research, the average person in America eats 4,400 calories every day. The Chinese eat 3,200 calories every day. And South Africans, which is my country if you didn't know, we eat 2,900 calories every day. I, however, do not agree with this. <laughs> I don't know if I could go against the research, but I've lived in South Africa my whole life and they eat a lot of processed foods, thick pieces of meat, vegetables. Oh, I was forced to eat vegetables my whole life. Vegetables are not a thing there. China just has healthier food, so maybe the calories are still gonna be high, but I do not 100% think that South Africa is healthier or eats less calories than China. Oh, spice. I put this one all by itself because it has so many benefits. Oh, I love spicy food. When I got here, I don't think I ever ate spice besides like a little bit of Tabasco here and there. 
And now I'm proud to say that I eat more spicy foods than most of my Chinese friends. Nice. Spicy foods have been shown to help with weight loss. It increases your core temperature, which increases your metabolism and helps burn calories faster. It helps with lower blood pressure, improving good cholesterol levels. So spice. Chinese food is 90% spice, but it is known that foreigners don't enjoy spicy food. So don't worry if you're not a big, big spice eater. When you do come here, just make sure you tell them bula, which means not spicy. They do have options for non-spicy foods. But me, however, the spicier the better. And that is definitely one thing that I believe helped me lose a lot of weight and also made the boss through my best friends a couple of nights. Our next topic is physical activity. Wow, these people walk everywhere. <laughs> they ride bikes. The Chinese mamas, which means like the grandmas in China, I love this. They have these exercise groups every night where they like dance. <laughs> And it's actually so nice always when I come home from work to hear like the music there and the music there. And you see these Chinese mamas just loving and enjoying their time. And it's really good for them. Even sometimes in the mornings actually when I wake up. But now that it's summer, you only see it at night. Public transportation is very convenient and also very reliable. Because traffic, you don't have to worry about traffic. You'll be at work on time. But this also means that you have to walk to the bus station. You have to walk to the subway station. And then when you get off, you need to then walk to your work. And this helps you be active much more during the day. In other countries, it's either dangerous or the restaurants are too far. We're here, everything is in a close proximity. And this kind of forces you to walk there and walk back, maybe after you ate or after you made some friends for a coffee or something like that. The other thing that I love to see, it is very common for people to take strolls after dinner. Like you always see the mom and the dad of the baby spending some quality time together taking a stroll. So for me, it is really nice after I ate at home or at a restaurant to feel like, wow, I want to take a walk. And because China is so safe and also has so many different things, you don't just walk around the building and it's just pitch black dark. There's actually a lot of things to see, people dancing, a lot of food stalls here and there, and so many people walking, kids playing. So night strolls are definitely something that helps the mind and also help me lose a lot of weight. The physical activity actually starts from a really young age because in the mornings when I go to school, you would see so many grandmas and grandpas taking their kids, playing on their scooters, going to school. And also they have like the PE classes, as well where they're forced to kind of exercise and the other funny thing is my chinese friends whether they like walking or not they're kind of forced to walk because they get car sick and i think this has really helped me walk a lot more because when i'm with them they always want to walk everywhere so i'm not complaining anymore i did get used to it and i do love it now i never really even thought about this but it was one night when i was teaching and i was sweating legs on the floor where I realized how much calories I burn during a night of teaching because your heart rate goes up and down and up and down because you run with the kids then you sit at the table and you run with them and this has also helped me a lot so if you're a foreigner planning on coming to China you also don't need to go to the gym that much especially if you walk a little bit to work and then also just actually teach the kids in class effortless the next topic is mindset I really believe that the Chinese overall are just very mindful when it comes to losing weight. Like when I eat a Coke or eat some fast food, believe me, they are not afraid to tell you that that is unhealthy or judge you a little bit with their looks. The thing that I mentioned is they are very mindful from a young age. Like when there's a birthday, a kid's birthday in my class, we eat cake. The kids are not scared to say no. And it's not because their mom said no, it's because they really believe it's unhealthy. So, I mean, if they believe something like cake is unhealthy from a young age, 
I don't think their mind will ever change then when they grow older and they do care more about their weight. Yes, I know there are some unhealthy foods in China, obviously. I know Chinese people love throwing that oil, frying that food, and also those instant noodles. So it's not just the diet part. But when all these things come together, don't tell me you don't agree with me why you think Chinese people are so skinny and so thin. The next topic has to be the city. I do feel the city has an impact to how physically active you're going to be. Like for example, if you live in Beijing, do you think it's really worth it to put your lungs under so much pressure to walk around with all that air pollution? I just don't think risking the health of your lungs is worth the workout by being outside. But if you live in a beautiful city like Kuoming where there is no air pollution, just look here. Kuoming has the most beautiful blue skies I've ever seen in my life. I'm so lucky to be walking around here every day, feel so free and no more moths. I'm so happy. Okay, so my last topic is the bad. Obviously there is some bad, so let me just cover this as well. So you don't shout at me and tell me, oh, this is also bad. So please don't get me wrong, Chinese foods are very high in calories. They do have a lot of fried foods. They have their instant noodles and they also love that oil. But it is your choice where you order food. It's the same as McDonald's. You have a choice to either eat McDonald's or eat at a restaurant where there's more salads or healthier foods. So obviously China has their unhealthy foods and their fried foods. So I'm not saying this video you can just order whatever you want, wherever you want and eat how much you want. I'm sorry it's not that easy. But they just have so many different types of foods here that when it is my cheat day, my calorie intake isn't that high because I don't eat McDeeds. I eat a Chinese cheat meal and it doesn't even count I think as half of the calories. It is true that a lot of Chinese follow the American way. So they do kind of eat more fast food just to be like the Americans. And I'm not saying all the Chinese, I'm saying some but mostly they are very health conscious. So that was it. I do believe that China is way more healthy than unhealthy. And especially for me coming here as a foreigner, the food filled me up very quickly. So I'm very lucky I don't have to control my portions. I'm not saying it's like this for everyone. I don't know, but this is my personal experience and it's impossible that I'm the only one that feels like this about China, their food, and also about losing weight as a foreigner. And also a lot of the points that I shared about why the Chinese are so thin. Anyway, I hope you guys got some good insights from today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.